Hey, Ronnie Dahl, Four Wheeling Australia. Welcome to a video where I'm possibly going to save you from looking like an idiot, or also possibly saving you from spending your hard-earned money on something that's not going to work for your vehicle, and that is your tyre and wheel combo, or your tyre and rims. We're going to simplify it so much that you'll be able to get a tape measure yourself, and you'll be able to see where you are, if you are in the right Goldilocks zone, where you need to be for your tyre and wheel setup. Is it going to work? Is it not going to work? Stay tuned and find out. So you get the correct tyre and wheel combination. We're going to cover tyre choice, rim choice, tyre load ratings, rim load ratings, speed rating for your tyres, and the difference between touring tyres and, of course, proper off-roading. But we're kicking off with one of the most important things, and that is the tyre sidewalls and the height of your tyres. Tires and wheels will determine your sidewall. And if you screw that up, you're gonna screw up the capabilities of your four-wheel drive. This is a sidewall, but you already knew that. And it's determined by a ratio on a metric tire anyway. So I'll just tell you that now because this is important for later. So we have 265 slash 60. So 60% 60 of 265 is your sidewall. Now, 20 mil of that sidewall is actually in here because it's the height of your whole tire it's from the base of the actual bead to the top of the tire so now you know that i'm going to show you something if i put this tape here to the top of the rim up to here we've got 120 mil but check this out this is a much bigger tire and as you can see it's resting on a rock so its sidewall over here is about 180 mil but we're resting on a rock and we're at full highway tire pressure and we're at 120 mil. That is the same measurement we're getting from that stock tire. So you can kind of see already where I'm going with this. If this is a fully inflated tire resting on a rock, it's an off-road tire, it's already bulging to 120 mil in the sidewall, what do you think that other one's gonna do? Keep in mind, ladies and gents, that was at full highway pressure. But what about off-road tire pressures when we lower the tires? When we drive on sand, we must lower those tire pressures. If we don't, we get bogged. If we don't lower them enough, we risk getting bogged. We also risk using more fuel. When we're on rocks, if we don't lower our tires, we skip around on the rocks and we can damage the underbelly of the vehicle. We can damage the tires even. And when we're going up a hill, up a sketchy hill or even down a sketchy hill, if you don't lower those tires, your footprint is much smaller. And this is how much you can increase your footprint by lowering your tires. And we're gonna go from five PSI to 40 psi two different wheels and tire combos one being the stock and one being the mud terrain how it looks at different tire pressures so first we're going to start with the 33 inch well it's actually a 32.7 at 40 psi sitting there nice and proud 30 psi you don't notice too much drop but there is a bit 20 psi that's when you're starting to notice it a lot more and then 15 and then when you get down to 10, it really starts moving. That's where it really starts like bagging out and giving you that lengthwise footprint. And then at five PSI, which is probably the lowest you take this particular tire to, and you can when you're in a really boggy situation, you can see that the sidewall is still holding up and it's still fairly strong. Let's now change the wheels, go to the 265 60s on an 18 inch rim. These are the stock wheels that came with the Hilux and they are in fact 30 and a half inch, starting at 40 PSI. The footprint is pretty similar, if not more than a 33 already. And that's just because of the weakness of the sidewall. So it, it already has more contact with the ground. Going down to 30, you can actually see it's moving already and then 20, and then 15, and you can see it's really, really, really now lengthening the footprint, which is great, because you've got a great contact with the ground, but it's starting to become a bit sketchy. Beyond 15, as you'll see right now, down to 10 PSI, it looks a bit scary now, the tire. Let's take it down to five PSI. At five PSI, would you drive this vehicle on soft sand? I don't think so. And if you did, it wouldn't be too long until you start pinching that bead, pinching the tire, and you're gonna wreck that tire very, very quickly. It doesn't have the same sidewall strength. It doesn't have the same sidewall height. 
it is a much weaker tyre, not for off-road, and I think that's where I'm going to close the case. Remember the 120 versus 120? The whole reason for that 120 versus 120 exercise is to really emphasize the fact that once we start lowering these tires to get more grip and traction when we go off-road, especially in sand, we want to gain more footprint. And the less sidewall we have, the less footprint we are going to be able to achieve. But not only that, when we're hopping around on rocky stuff or we hit a log or a washout really fast, that tire has got less compression before it hits the rim itself. And that's how you can damage your rim, it's how you can damage your tires, it's how you can damage your vehicle and your suspension. This is from experience. On the tag along quite some time ago, we had a Land Rover Discovery. And it was, would have been about a 2017, 2018. Now, all the Land Rover Discoveries that I can see here, the options, the SE, the, the Luxury SE, and whatever all the different options are, they all have either 19 inch wheels, 20 inch wheels, or 21 inch wheels with a very low profile tire. Now this couple had Pirelli tires on. Now Pirelli makes some amazing race tires. They're used in a Formula One. But as off-road tires, as a low profile, they even specify themselves, you can't lower them any more than 35 PSI. If you lower them more than 35 PSI, then there's no guarantee, there's no warranty on those tires. That's what they told these people because they, they did two tires in the space of one and a half day just by pinching the wheel, the rim. That was it. And they weren't even that low. They were, they were sub 35, but they weren't even that low. Maybe 28 PSI. So that's why I'm telling you guys, look at your sidewalls. Look at your sidewalls. So what is the ideal sidewall size for your four-wheel drive? Generally speaking, this is a region. My hat is a golly lock zone. Within there, that's where you want to be in those numbers. Out here, that's where you got to consider. This is too extreme, and this over here is just far too low. So the ideal range to be in is about 175 mil to about 220 mil. That is a great sidewall size for off-roading. But don't forget guys, when measuring the height of your tire, make sure you include the 20 mil that's inside the rim. And I've allowed for that in these calculations. We mate. Yeah, you. Hey, do you mind hitting that subscribe button down there and giving the video a thumbs up? Good on you, mate. Cheers. So when it comes to full driving, there's two different kinds of full driving that I consider. There is the touring and the overlanding, which I consider being part of traveling long distances on highways and gravel roads to remote areas as well. And there might be an occasional obstacle, a river crossing, you know, something decent that's serious that requires proper full drive, low range and whatnot. And that's what I would consider this size tire to be set up for is a 31 and a half inch with 17 inch wheels. That's a pretty good all rounder. It can do a lot. I used to have this on my Hilux actually, and we did quite a bit of full driving. 90% of full driving is probably going to be in that category. However, if you do seek the tracks less traveled, the harsh environments, or the really remote areas where you should really have two spares and all your spare water and fuel and all those things, all your backup stuff, that's where you may need to consider some better tires. And when I say better tires, it's not just about how big your sidewall is, it's also about the rim choice, it's also about the tire type choice. And we'll get to that very soon because you might be on a very harsh environment or you might be a bit of a rock hopper. You might be out here just having fun. So there's a lot of different aspects of full driving which you need to determine what are you doing. This can factor in most of it, but if you really know that you're gonna hunt for the other stuff and you feel like you need a winch because you get stuck quite often, that's when you need something a bit more robust. 33 inch tires on a 17 inch wheel or rim, whatever you want to call it. This is the Hilux. It used to have the 31 and a half inch tires and the same rims that are on now. It's a compromise putting this size on it. This is the biggest size that you could practically fit on a Hilux, on an IFS vehicle, most dual cab utes. This is what I would call a hybrid 
kind of size tire. Uh, with the sidewall and everything, it's got great clearance and all that. But there are definitely a lot of cons to having this size tire and that type of tire on this vehicle, on this type of vehicle, I should more specifically say. So I'll get to all those very shortly. But now to give you an example of vehicles that are really suited for the more, the rough stuff, the rock hoppy stuff, the tough tracks, the harsh environments that I spoke about earlier. And that would be Nissan Patrols. Y60, Y61, a 70 series Land Cruiser, an 80 series Land Cruiser. Those vehicles with the solid front and rear axles can generally fit the bigger tires and are generally then more suited and more, they're stronger as well. They're more suited for the rough stuff. So yes, you can turn an IFS vehicle in into a bit more of a tough vehicle with bigger tires and all that, but there is a limit and there are compromises. And that's what we're going to talk about next. We're now going to consider tyre size and tyre type pros and cons, just really briefly, because if you want to know the nitty gritty of the tyre types, there is a mud terrain versus all terrain versus highway terrain video, which is my most popular video on YouTube. It's got 2 million views. There's a link to it down below. I highly encourage you to watch that after this video so you can make your choice on your tyre type. Okay if this video hasn't made it up for you. So we have the stock terrain, stock terrain? The highway terrain, the stock tire. And we have the most extreme practical tire that I can fit to a Hilux. And it is a mud terrain, 33 inch. It's the biggest tire you could probably fit to this without all the scrubbing and all of those other problems. This comes with some pros, but a lot of cons. And this comes with some pros and a lot of cons as well and they're kind of completely flipped over. So the cons of this tire is, it's weak, it's bugger all sidewall, which you know is king by now. It's not a very strong sidewall. It's, the traction is not great. It's built for the road. That's all this tire is made for. But it'll give you great fuel economy. Um, rolling resistance is pretty much not there because it's designed to be on this vehicle um, and it's probably, well, another con, I guess, it's very cheap. This is very cheap compared to that. And it's probably available in every state and territory and every remote community and every mine site that's out there. So let's look at this one briefly as well. So this is only the brief pros and cons because that other video has got everything in full detail, including my cat. <laughs> Mud terrain. Okay. Fuel economy sucks. Noise sucks. The balance sucks. What else? Compromising my range. Rolling resistance. Extra wear on the vehicle. Faster wear on the tire because it's made mainly for off-road. Let's face it, it's a mud terrain. It's a softer compound. Another con. Very expensive compared to that. <clears throat> so the, the pros. Good clearance. Almost impenetrable compared to this. I could drive over sticks with the right tire pressure and rocks and reef and all kinds of stuff and generally I'll be all good. What else? I can deflate this quite a bit. I can get more of a footprint because they're bigger. So there's a lot of benefits to the off-road aspect, but when it comes to practicality and your pockets, that's where it's gonna hit you the most. After saying that, you've probably figured out that you wanna be somewhere between this tire and that tire, but what exactly do you need? And what exactly do you need for your vehicle in specific? We're going to get to that very soon. A couple more vital things you need to know before we go into what size you need when it comes to wheel and tires. And that is the load rating, the speed rating, and the offset, the wheel offset. That's important too. Now there are two specific videos I've done for those. I'll link them down below, but I'll just quickly explain what it actually is so you know. So for example, my Hilux, these Picor rims are rated at 1500 kilos each. So you add all four of those up, that's four and a half ton. That is way more than my GVM. So I know that these wheels are sufficient for my vehicle. They will pass inspection and all those other important legal things. So the legality you also got to consider. The tires, what load rating do they have? Well, we want to get them close to that 1500 as well. So mine are 3220 to 1450. So always go with a lower number. So each tire is 
1,320 kilos at least. That's the load capacity it can hold. The reason why it varies is because the PSI on your tires, depending on how much PSI you put in your tire, will depend on what rating you can go with. So the lowest rating at a recommended PSI is 1320 and the other one is 1450. So how I got those numbers, it says on your sidewall. And that link to the video down below will explain all that to you. There's also a speed rating. This one is Q. So Q equates to a certain number of speed. So in my case, it's 160 kilometers per hour that these tires are rated for. Why do you need 160 kilometers per hour? Well, it's always good to have more than what you actually need so you know that you're within the safe parameter. So, for example, if you're overtaking two road trains, which is not uncommon in Australia, you can get road trains that have four trailers. If you've got that twice, you want to get in front of that thing as fast as you can. Normally, they sit up each other's bums, so there's no room. You've got to go past a whole lot. And sometimes, some people, I'm not saying me, you may end up at $1.50 or $1.60 even by the time you pass them. So therefore, speed rating is important in those senses as well. If your speed rating's too low, yeah, you might not want to be overtaking two road trains at a time, if you know what I mean. Hmm, steel wheels versus aluminium wheels, also known as aluminum. What is best? Well, folks, there is an entire video dedicated to this where I take a hammer to these wheels. I would suggest you watch that to make up your mind. the wheel size and the tire size and not only that folks there's even more information on different cars down here and these are just recommendations you should really pause the video right now now of course it couldn't fit everything on the screen so if you want to go back and see it again just pause it but it's also in the description down below with bonus information Y62 from Dash Off Road, he's another YouTuber he's got a lot of experience with that car and Grizzly and Bear with the Defender traveling the world years of experience behind their recommendations and their opinions and their advice and more vehicles down below which I'm actually right now as this video is being edited and all that before it was edited before you've seen it I've been doing more research so there's a lot of different vehicle specific down there and if you have experiences of your own with a specific vehicle that may not be covered put it down in the comments below because you're probably going to help someone else out don't forget about the other links down there because there's a lot of links to a lot of resources that's going to help you in tire choice wheel offset, and all those other things. Thanks for watching. See you next time.